I ordered takeout from Ellie.me and there were so many maggots in it. Look, they are still crawling. It's so disgusting. Oh my god, when I was halfway through, I turned on my phone flashlight and saw something really off. Just look at this head. Oh my goodness, what kind of meat is this? What animal is it from? Let me show you the takeout I got. I was just about to eat, but something fell off. Do you see this? Look at the rice, it's pulling apart in strings. At first I thought it was sticky rice, but when I checked, it's just regular white rice that's gone bad, and it was still sold to me. I want to ask this dishonest seller, when people give you a bad review, do you really think it's unfair? The rice has gone so bad, it's stringy. How am I supposed to eat this? Following the ongoing public attention to the incident in China, where tanker trucks were used to transport both coal-derived oil and edible oil, concerns over food delivery hygiene have once again become a focal point. Recently, a large number of videos revealing hygiene issues in food delivery meals have surfaced online. This shop must have a lot of extra brushes. Look, why else would the owner give me one? Take a look at this. I just ordered some fried chicken, and I made a special note asking the owner to add extra honey. As you can see, the owner was very generous and gave me plenty of honey. But something feels a bit off. Why does this honey look exactly like the new bottle of laxative I just bought? I was eating my takeout, and halfway through, I found something strange. When I looked closer, I saw there was a 10 yuan bill under the rice. The money, which was covered in bacteria, was placed right with the food. Should I be happy about this or what? I just ordered some spicy hot pot and asked the owner to add extra vegetables. But look at this, there's a green cleaning rag in it. That's so gross. Oh my gosh, this burger has raw meat inside. I'm shocked. It looks cooked on the outside, but the middle layer is completely raw. I didn't realize it until I was halfway through. In Nanjing Jiangsu, a resident filmed a food delivery shop that was dirty and chaotic. The owner placed a large iron basin on the dirty ground and used a shovel to mix rice. This video sparked heated discussion on social media. One user angrily asked, Would you dare to eat this? At first, I thought they were mixing pig food. Is this really for people? I'm afraid I'd get sick eating this. Another user exposed that some dishonest business owners buy leftover rice from other shops at a low price use it to make fried rice, and sell it to customers. In recent years, the number of businesses focusing solely on delivery has increased in China. Along with this, food safety problems have also grown. Recently, ghost kitchen delivery businesses in Beijing were exposed. Ghost kitchens refer to shops without proper licenses or photos of the premises. Over 30 such shops were found operating next to a recycling station, raising concerns about hygiene. You might think the takeout you order for lunch comes from these small street shops, but the truth is, it could be from a ghost kitchen, a place you'd never go to in your life. A man in the video revealed what's really happening with these ghost kitchens in Beijing's Chaoyang district. He said that many of the shops on food delivery platforms aren't even real restaurants. They're just central kitchens built next to a garbage station. More than 10,000 delivery couriers come here to pick up meals. The man randomly picked another delivery shop on the platform. He found that it was also a ghost kitchen hidden in an office building with 20 ghost kitchens operating in a shared area on the third floor. The video showed only one pickup counter in the kitchen and a single worker in the back. The worker's only job was to heat and package pre-made meals before the courier picked them up for delivery. In the video, the man said, I'm not here to argue whether pre-made meals are good or bad. As a consumer, I believe we have the right to know what we're eating. For example, edible oils are labeled as non-GMO. Whether I buy it or not is my choice, but I need to know. After the video caught public attention, Chinese state media reported on August 24th that a food delivery shop in Beijing's Chaoyang district called Wanjing Barbecue appeared clean. Its credentials were complete. Its rating was 4.9, and it ranked 6 on the top barbecue sellers list on the food delivery platform LA.me. However, an investigation showed that the shop was actually a ghost kitchen. The business had borrowed someone else's license, its real address was different from the one on the license, 
and the photos of the dining area were fake. Reports reveal that in Chaoyang District, a business called Real Scene Kitchen operates right next to a recycling station. Over 30 delivery shops use the same food court license to run their businesses. The poor hygiene conditions are problematic. Another business, Jingmen Luo, has more than 40 delivery shops using one license. The hygiene at these shops is just as bad. According to a report by Chinese Business Network, it's common for multiple shops to use the same company name and address to apply for a license on food delivery platforms. These shops typically serve customers spending less than 20 yuan per person and sell more than 500 meals a month. Most operate as stalls and food courts. Many food stalls on platforms like Meituan and Ella.me don't upload any photos of their premises. A delivery courier from Yinchuan, Ningxia, revealed that he once picked up a meal from a public restroom where 10 delivery shops were operating out of the same address. One user warned, don't eat braised food from street vendors. I've seen small workshops preparing food right next to garbage dumps. When ordering delivery, it's best to choose nearby brick and mortar stores that you can check out yourself. If they don't have a physical location, it's better not to order. Some users said the lack of proper oversight by food delivery platforms is the main reason for the chaos in ghost kitchens. One user stated, Exposing these things isn't very helpful. Just find Ella.me and Meituan. If the fines are high enough, the platforms will enforce stricter self-audits. Chinese media reported that these shops, since they don't need to interact with customers face-to-face, -face, often attract customers with polished online presentations. A report on a spicy stir-fry shop in northern China showed a kitchen floor covered in grease. The chef stood on cardboard while working, and the countertops were also greasy. The small room was filled with a strong smell of fried chili peppers. In the neighboring shop, the same conditions were found. Regulatory authorities noted that sticky floors and sticky tables were common complaints in ghost kitchens. Without dine-in services, the biggest issue with these shops is poor hygiene. Customers can't see what's happening in the kitchen, so these shops care less about keeping things clean. Hygiene problems aren't limited to inside the shops. Outside, trash is often discarded carelessly and grease is everywhere. Some shops have to use sodium hydroxide regularly to maintain basic hygiene. In some shops, ingredients are just left on the floor. Food safety regulations require ingredients to be placed on shelves at least 10 centimeters above the ground to prevent rodents but many shops store their ingredients directly on the floor. In some cases, the space is so cramped that piles of ingredients block the delivery couriers from picking up orders. Many social media users shared similar concerns. Some said entire streets of delivery-only shops were filthy. It's so dirty. After seeing it, I've lost the desire to order delivery. Some delivery-only shops also engage in deceptive practices. According to reports, a reporter asked a shop owner about difficulties placing an order. The owner redirected the reporter to a different online shop with a different name, saying they were the same business. Along with customer complaints about dirty food deliveries, some conscientious delivery couriers have warned customers not to eat from certain shops due to unsanitary conditions. On September 5th, a delivery courier in Zhangjiang City, Guangdong, exposed the poor hygiene at a chicken soup shop in Shashan district. He found that the chicken was being stored and processed in the restroom. The courier who exposed the situation posted on social media. He said most customers at this chicken soup shop were hospital patients, and his conscience couldn't let him stay silent. He informed the patients about the situation, saying, It's not nutritious or hygienic. It's better to order from restaurants where you've eaten in person, even if you're busy, don't forget to eat well. I suggest you don't eat from that place. I picked up a delivery there, and the hygiene conditions were terrible. It felt so dirty. There were maggots with wings on the barbecue. It was disgusting. In addition to takeout-only shops, dine-in restaurants, including popular social media spots, also have food safety risks. One example is the internet-famous restaurant chain Ben Luo Bo, in January this year, a customer posted online, saying that while dining at the Ben Luo Bo restaurant in Shenzhen, they saw an employee collecting leftover rice from several tables and putting it back into the rice cooker to serve new customers. 
the restaurant responded, confirming the customer's recollection, but claimed it was an employee mistake. They explained that leftover rice is usually collected for staff to eat, but this time the employee mistakenly put the rice back into the pot meant for customers. The restaurant assured people that the rice was clean and recycling it for staff was a way to avoid waste. But online users questioned the practice, saying, even if it's for the staff, they shouldn't be eating leftover rice. How do you know it wasn't contaminated by customers? Social media shows that as early as 2021, similar complaints were made about Ben Luo Bowl in Changsha. A customer posted in October 2021, saying, I watched the staff dump rice from several buckets into a big pot, then serve it to new customers. It made me lose my appetite, so I didn't eat. Ben Luo Bowl has become a popular dining brand in recent years. On social media, it's been called Changsha's rising star for Hunan cuisine. One user noted, you have to wait at least three hours, and during peak times, they serve over 1,000 orders. Ben Luo Bo now has 12 locations across China, with 10 in Changsha, one in Shenzhen, and one in Zhouzhou. On the food delivery app Meituan, the average cost per person at the Shenzhen location is 70 yuan. Food safety is something everyone cares about. Many people, due to busy schedules, have to eat at restaurants or order takeout. But because China's regulation system is weak, the public has found other ways to ensure food safety. Recently, the topic of spending 100 yuan to eat with a delivery driver became popular online. It started when a user in China posted a video in which they gave a delivery driver 100 yuan and asked him to take them to the cleanest small restaurant for a meal. The topic has since attracted 18,000 participants and 4.6 billion views. Many users praise the idea, saying it improves the quality of takeout food and boosts the restaurant business, a win-win situation. Some users tagged the platforms Ele.me and Meituan, asking them to create a ranking list of driver-recommended restaurants. Others pointed out that the popularity of eating with delivery drivers highlights a bigger issue. Many unethical businesses ignore food safety. Besides hoping that delivery drivers can recommend clean restaurants, some regulatory agencies are also looking to use drivers to monitor kitchen hygiene. According to Chinese media, the market regulation bureau in Laishi City, Qingdao, hired 20 delivery drivers as volunteer food safety supervisors in August. Their job is to report any violations, such as dirty kitchens, missing food safety seals, or incomplete business licenses, using delivery drivers as eyes and ears for food safety oversight. Similarly, in Shenyang, the Market Regulation Bureau launched the Snap and Report campaign on September 10. It encourages delivery drivers to take photos of food safety hazards or violations they see during deliveries and report them. If verified by local regulators, drivers earn points. Drivers with more points get promotions, honors, and benefits. In September, the Market Regulation Bureau in Rochang County, Xinjiang, held a food safety workshop with delivery drivers. They set up a group chat to share information and urge drivers to report unsanitary kitchens, contributing to collective efforts to ensure food safety. E-commerce analyst Chen Li Teng says platforms should strictly review a business's qualifications and hygiene before allowing them to operate. He also suggests that regulators regularly inspect food courts and stalls, addressing any problems quickly and encouraging customers to help monitor food safety and cleanliness. Some analysts believe that the fact that a restaurant is reported by a delivery driver for being dirty highlights a failure in social regulation. It's surprising that this situation has been positively covered by the media. As for the regulatory officials, all they seem to do is make a statement and shut down the offending restaurant. For the public, it appears that violations like dirty conditions and operating without a license only get discovered when someone files a complaint and the local market regulators step in to investigate. This process has left many Chinese taxpayers confused. People want to know what the so-called regulatory departments are actually doing day to day. If restaurants have to become filthy to the point where it's unbearable, or food makes people sick before action is taken, then what is the purpose of these regulatory bodies? Under the Chinese Communist Party, regulatory agencies at all levels have been largely ineffective, and this has been a long-standing issue. Based on the suggestion from Chinese media to make delivery drivers act as food safety supervisors, it seems like the government might be trying to shift responsibility for food safety onto these casual workers. 
More importantly, even if delivery drivers can monitor a restaurant's hygiene, can they also ensure the businesses aren't using gutter oil, contaminated meat, or fake products? And what about the many restaurants that don't sell takeout through platforms? Who will supervise those? China's food safety problems aren't just limited to the restaurant industry. There are serious issues at the source of the food itself. Toxic baby formula, fruits and vegetables with dangerously high pesticide levels, fake eggs, harmful meat products, and even salt laced with toxic chemicals all have seriously harmed public health. Music